Today we're going to talk about the transformative power of your morning routine. I'm going to share with you five things that if you do them before 9 a.m. can truly change your life. So let's dive right in. The first thing I want you to do when you wake up in the morning is to set the tone with gratitude. Now you might be wondering, why gratitude? Well, gratitude is not just a warm and fuzzy feeling. It's a powerful emotion that can actually shape your reality. You see, when we express gratitude, we're telling the universe that we're already living in the reality we desire. It's not about asking for something. It's about embodying the emotions as if your dreams have already come true. So before 9 a.m., take a moment to feel the excitement, joy, and incredible gratitude as if your dreams have already manifested. The second thing you need to do is combine clear intention with elevated emotion. This is where the magic happens. It's not just about thinking positively. It's about feeling the emotions associated with your desires. Think about the emotion you would feel if your dreams came true. Excitement, joy, inspiration. This emotional state is crucial because it's the energy, the frequency, the carrier of your thoughts. It's like tuning into a specific frequency on a radio dial. Remember, it's not just about wishing or wanting. It's about becoming a vibrational match to the potential that exists in the quantum field. When your energy aligns with that potential, it's going to find you. So, combine your clear intention with elevated emotion and watch the miracles unfold. Now let's talk about crossing the river to your new self. Getting from your old self to your new self is like embarking on a journey. It requires passion, intensity, and the will to move beyond your comfort zone. Picture it like this. On one side of the river is your old self, and on the other side is your new self, the person you aspire to be. You know there's another side, and with determination, you can cross that river. But it's not just about moving physically. It's about moving beyond your emotions, habits of thought, and unconscious states of mind and body. As you journey across that river, breaking free from the chains of the past, you liberate a tremendous amount of energy. This energy becomes the fuel to design a new destiny. Remember, it's about moving beyond who you were to become who you want to be. Now, let's explore the fascinating concept of the quantum model of reality in simpler terms. This model suggests that everything you can think of is possible right now. It's like having all the different paths your life could take laid out in front of you, and you have the power to choose which one you want. Imagine a moment when everything feels just right. You're not thinking about the past or worrying about the future. That's what I call the elegant present moment. It's a special time when you become nobody not literally disappearing, but more like shedding the labels and roles that society puts on us. No one, nothing, nowhere, and in no time. Entering the quantum field sounds like stepping into a magical realm, doesn't it? Well, it kind of is, but here's the trick. You can't enter this field while carrying the baggage of being a somebody. You have to let go of all those labels, expectations, and judgments that the world has thrown at you. When you do that, you're entering the quantum field as a nobody, a blank canvas, ready to create. Now let's talk about using this quantum idea in practical ways. If you want to heal your body, stop thinking too much about your body. It's not about ignoring it, but rather shifting your focus from what's wrong to the idea that you're already healed. Imagine feeling healthy and strong, and your body might just follow suit. Next up, changing your personality. I suggest becoming no one in this case, too. It's not about losing yourself. It's about letting go of those habits and traits that you want to change. By shedding the old personality, you make space for the new one. Imagine being the person you want to become, and slowly, your actions and thoughts might start aligning with that vision. Now, creating something new in your life, whether it's a new job, a new relationship, or just a new outlook, you've got to get beyond your current environment. If you're stuck in the same routine, thinking the same thoughts, it's tough for something new to happen. 
I suggest, suggest stepping into the unknown, getting to nowhere, and allowing the magic to unfold. And if you're dreaming of a new future, something beyond what you can imagine right now, you've got to get beyond time. That means not being too fixated on when and how things should happen. Trust the process. Let go of the need to control everything and allow time to become a flexible, ever-changing concept. Think of it like this. Life is full of possibilities, like a giant menu of options. The quantum model of reality tells us that this menu is available to us right now. But to place our order, we need to be in the present moment, free from the constraints of being a somebody. It's about choosing what we want, imagining it as if it's already happening, and then letting the universe do its thing. So as you go about your day, remember this simple but powerful idea. Embrace the elegant present moment, become nobody, and let the quantum field work its magic in your life. It might sound a bit out there, but hey, the most extraordinary things often do. And who knows, by understanding and applying the quantum model of reality, you might just find yourself creating a life you never thought possible. Finally, let's talk about fifth dimensional creation. In the third dimension, creation takes time, searching for a house, a job, or a relationship. But in the fifth dimension, you are the vortex collapsing time and space, drawing your desires to you. Instead of going out to get it, you are drawing it in. This shift is from trying to control or predict the outcome to trusting the outcome and trusting the unknown. You don't analyze how or when, you trust the process. The quantum model creates an energetic field, collapsing time and space, bringing what you desire to you. It's a shift from third dimensional creation to fifth dimensional creation, where your energy is the magnet pulling your dreams towards you. Now let's practice a simple exercise to align your energy and consciousness. Sit up straight, open the channel to your brain, and take a slow, steady breath. Inhale, lifting the muscles perineum front and back. Lock down the first center, then follow your breath through the second and third centers. As you continue to follow your breath up through your chest, shoulders, and throat, imagine your energy reaching the top of your head or the space of your pineal gland. Hold your breath and contract the intrinsic muscles, lifting and compressing them to push cerebral spinal fluid into your brain. Remember, this isn't about turning purple. It's a slow, steady breath with a will greater than any program. It might take time and practice, but it's about disturbing the old energy loops and shaking them loose. Surrender into any unusual experiences. It's a sign you're getting closer. It's about becoming a vibrational match to your desires and trusting the process. Practice the exercise daily, and over time, you'll witness the transformation in your consciousness and life. When you feel that feeling and it's visceral, no person, no thing, no experience will stand in the way between you and that vision and you will be initiated by the universe into wealth. Once you start feeling unlimited, once you start feeling abundant, once you start feeling worthy, now you're teaching your body chemically to understand what your mind has intellectually understood. Now it begins to come to you. You become the vortex or the magnet to your destiny. You are not going anywhere to get anything. You are actually collapsing space and time and you are drawing the experience to you. You are the vortex because when there's a vibrational match between your energy and that potential that exists in the quantum field by tuning a radio dial, when you lock into that frequency, if you keep revisiting that energetic signature over again every single day, then you don't have to go anywhere and get it. The new job finds you, the new house actually finds you, the new relationship finds you, because you are the vortex that's drawing the experience to you. The universe only gives us what we think we're worthy of receiving. So we got to come initiated into this and understand it. If you want to create a new life, a new personal reality, you got to change your personality, which means you better start thinking about what you've been thinking about and changing it. 
you begin to become conscious of your unconscious actions or habits or behaviors and modify them. And then we have to begin to look at the emotions that we live by every single day that keep us connected to the past and decide, do these emotions belong in our future? So most people are trying to create a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And can you select a new possibility in the quantum field and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body as the unconscious mind, the objective mind, does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Now, the latest research in epigenetics says it's absolutely possible. This every day, installing the circuitry every day, conditioning the body into the emotion of the future, that your body begins to change to look like it's already happened. Now, this is where it gets fun, because now you no longer have to go anywhere to get it. If you think that your thoughts have something to do with your future, just from a theoretical standpoint, that your thoughts create your destiny, and you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, well then your life isn't going to change very much as long as you're thinking the same way. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you're left with the memories of the past. Is it possible then that the way you think and the way you feel can begin to produce effects in your outer world? Now, that isn't something that you swallow in one bite. It's a process of gaining knowledge. It's a process of practice. It's a process of experience. But once you start seeing those synchronicities, those coincidences, those opportunities that start to fall into place because you're experiencing change in your outer world, if you're doing the work, you're going to start paying attention to what you're doing inside of you that's producing the effect outside of you. And once you correlate the changes of what you're doing inside of you with the effect you produce outside of you, you're gonna pay attention to what you did and you're gonna do it again. And all of a sudden, you're going to start believing more that you're the creator of your life and less of the victim of your life. And those same thoughts lead to the same choices. The same choices lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the exact same experiences, and we anticipate the same feelings or emotions from those experiences. And those emotions are the payoff that drive our very same thoughts. Well, our biology, our neurocircuitry, our neurochemistry, our hormones, and even our gene expression will be equal to how we think, how we act, and how we feel and how we think, how we act, and how we feel is called our personality. And our personality creates our personal reality. That's it. I want people to begin to understand that thoughts are very powerful, feelings drive our thoughts, and that they can begin to create a better life for themselves once they understand some of these principles. We live in a world where often when people think about visioning the future, they vision stuff. So you have a vision of the car you want, or you have a vision of an amount of money you want, or you have a vision of a home you want, and you see this with people with their vision boards. What's your take on that? And is that the right type of visioning? And what is the right type of visioning? Well, we do so many different variations because I think people integrate information differently. And all of those cars and homes and whatever that is, they are symbols of what it looks like when a person actually arrives at this concept called abundance, right? So if those things help them to associate with something that creates a feeling of abundance, and they're building their vision board to help them to get clear on their intent, then that's fine. Because they're associating objects or things or material things that they'll say, that's when I know that I'm abundant. That's fine. Other people will say, look, abundance just means that I have more than I need, and I'm happy with that. And for them, there's a feeling that is associated with that. And when they begin to dream about their future, they may see themselves in a scene or see themselves a certain way. I don't care what it takes for the person to get there because once they have their abundance, and this happens quite a bit in our work, when you finally have everything you want, there's only one thing you're going to ask yourself. 
How am I going to contribute to the world? How am I going to make a difference? So we use different tools to help people to get to that point. But if the person's doing the vision board and they're saying, when I get my new car, I get my new house, I get my new relationship, then I'm going to feel so great. Well, then they're back to the program, waiting for it to happen, for them to feel the emotion. They're believing their outer world has to change in order for them to feel better. There's no effect of drawing the experience to you that way. So the person has to use those tools to get them into the emotional state for them to feel like it's already happened. Now think about this. If you get up from a creative process and you feel grateful, you feel a love for life, you feel a joy for existence, you feel a passion for the moment, you will not be looking for your future because you'll feel like it's already happened. It's the moment that we start feeling those self-limiting emotions that we feel separation and then we start looking for it again. Well then, if you're waiting, you're not creating, you're in separation again. So then, whatever it takes for you to move into a state of being, and what is a state of being? Thoughts are the vocabulary of the brain. Feelings are the vocabulary of your body. How you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So then, if you wake up in the morning and you come back to your senses with a clean slate and you say, I don't feel anything, and you say, well, let me start thinking about all the problems in my life. Well, all those problems are connected to different people or different objects or things at different times and places. The moment you remember your problems, a memory is a record of the past. You're thinking in the past. Every one of those problems has an emotion associated with them. So all of a sudden you start feeling unhappy, you start feeling bitter, you start feeling frustrated. So now your body's in the past. So then most people then create a state of being that's connected to their past. And if they're in the familiar past, then they are going to crave the predictable future and they're going to fall back into routine. So then we want people then to get very clear on that vision of their future, however they do it and begin to combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion. And the stronger the emotion they feel from the vision they're creating, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they're going to pay attention to the pictures in their mind. And now they're remembering their future. And biologically, it's exactly the same as remembering your past. In fact, if you're not being defined by a vision of the future, it means you're making your past more real than your future. So how many people in this audience have a clear vision of their future? You see, you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day. Out of those 60 to 70,000 thoughts that you think in one day, 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before. So if you believe that your thoughts somehow are connected to your life, then the same thoughts always lead to the same choices. The same choices always lead to the same behaviors. The same behaviors create the same experiences and the same experiences produce the same emotions. And those very same emotions drive the very same thoughts. And your biology, your neurocircuitry, your neurochemistry, your neurohormones, and even your genetic expression is equal to how you think, how you act, and how you feel. And how you think, how you act, and how you feel is called your personality. And your personality creates your personal reality. That's it. So then, if you wanted to create a new personal reality, a new life, then you would have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You would have to become aware of your unconscious thoughts and observe them. You would have to pay attention to your automatic habits and behaviors and modify them. And you would have to look at the emotions you live by every single day that are connected to your past and decide if those emotions belong in your future. You see, most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality, and it doesn't work. You literally have to become someone else. And you are here this week to learn vital information about creating a future and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past. Because if you are not defined by some vision that is bigger than you, and you are not passionate about that vision, then you are left with the old hardware of the past in your brain and you will be predictable in your life. So would you agree then? New thoughts, new information should lead to new choices. 
new choices should lead to new behaviors, and new behaviors should create new experiences, and new experiences should produce new emotions, and those new emotions should drive new thoughts, and that's called evolution. So if your brain is a record of the past and you don't have a vision of the future, then you are living in the past and you will never arrive at that new future. Now there's another potential for you to exist free from the chains of the old self. That potential exists right now. And I want you to teach your body emotionally what it would feel like so that it begins to believe it's in the actual experience of freedom. Let your body feel freedom so that it thinks it's in the experience. And I want you to sit in your body emotionally to feel the joy of how you would feel. So the body begins to be in a future potential now, emotionally. And there's a potential for you to have all your needs met and be wealthy. And I want you to instruct your body to experience wealth and the joy of riches ahead of the actual events so your body thinks it's in the experience. If you feel it, your body thinks it's in the experience. It doesn't know the difference. Now there's a potential in the field for a genius mind, quicksilver thoughts, insights that take you to new horizons, and the electricity that's created from an open mind. Teach your body emotionally the joy and the inspiration of what that would feel like so the body begins to experience your genius and think that it's in the event now. And there's a possibility existing simultaneously in the quantum field of the vitality of a new life, rich with opportunity, an awe for adventure, and a sense of unbelievability where you feel like you're in a dream. There's a potential in the quantum field that all your prayers are answered, that possibility finds you, that its prayers are being answered. Being inspired means to see a future without obstacles, to see a potential without sweating the details, to know that you're connected to a new reality. Lift yourself up and memorize this feeling of possibility, to be open to the expectation of the unknown. When you get to the top, now you hold your breath. And when you hold your breath, you contract those intrinsic muscles and you begin to lift those muscles up and you begin to compress those muscles and you begin to push that cerebral spinal fluid up into your brain. So then why do I ask you to inhale and hold your breath? Now this isn't inhaling and turning purple and pushing. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. It's a slow, steady breath and you follow that breath all the way to the top, either to the top of your head or you put your awareness on where that pineal gland is between the back of your throat and the back of your head. Now, when you inhale, that inhalation is very slow and very steady. It's not a big inhalation and pushing. It's a slow, steady breath, and you're contracting these muscles and coordinating it, and you're following your breath all the way to the top of your head. And when you get to the top of your head, I'm gonna ask you to inhale a little bit more, and as you pull up, you're gonna lock these muscles down even further, and you're lifting them up. Once you lift them up and you have your attention either on the top of your head or the space that your pineal gland occupies in space, I'm going to ask you to lock those muscles down and pump, squeeze, or push. And I want you to push that fluid up into your brain by squeezing the muscles, not by holding your breath harder, but by squeezing those muscles. I want you to begin to pump that fluid and begin to compress up against your pineal gland. When you do this breath, you have to demonstrate a will that's greater than any program. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. You have to be inspire, inspiration, the movement of energy. Don't be afraid of it, just surrender into it. For some people, their body will do unusual things. That's information trying to be integrated into it. Don't be afraid of it, just surrender into it. If your body does weird things, more than likely that's energy moving to your brain. If you have a lapse of consciousness, or you all of a sudden find yourself on the ground, that's energy moving into your brain. It's happened to me numerous times. It's a sign that you're getting close or at least doing it correctly. Now where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So you want that energy to move right to the top of your head. 
inspiration, the movement of energy. You have to find a level of intensity or a level of passion that's greater than the body as the mind or any addiction to any emotion. Don't be afraid of it. Just surrender into it. On a Sunday morning while she was in the shower, her husband said goodbye to his two children, yelled something to her while she was in the shower, and then went to the tallest building in Amsterdam and jumped off the building and committed suicide. Now that is a stressful event. And when she got the news, she experienced all the emotions that people experience from something that's shocking and traumatic like that. She was suffering. She was in pain. She was resentful. She was guilty. She was confused. She was angry. She went through the whole gamut of emotions. And all of those emotions, by the way, are derived from the hormones of stress. So she has an event in her life. It changes her biologically. She doesn't know how to control her emotional reaction. It turns into a mood, one long emotional reaction. If you keep reviewing that event in your mind, you begin to produce the same chemistry in your brain and body as if the event was occurring. So her body is being conditioned to the past because she's reliving the experience 50 to 100 times in a day and her body is beginning to believe it's in the same past experience over and over again. It ultimately goes from a mood to a temperament, and now people are asking her in her life, why are you so upset? She tells the story, and she's basically saying, I am this way because of this event that happened to me four months ago. So then if we keep that going for extended periods of time and those emotions are driving our thoughts, and we can't think greater than how we feel, our feelings have become the means of thinking. We're thinking in the past, and now we're stuck in our biology. So one day she wakes up, and she's completely paralyzed from her waist down, and she can't get out of bed, so they rush her to the hospital. They do MRIs, they do all the tests, they can't find anything significant with her, so they just diagnose her with neuritis. And so now she's bedridden, and she cannot literally get out of bed. So now she can't work, she can't take care of her children. Her mother has to move in with her, and she doesn't have any money because she's not working, and her stress levels go up. So now the condition gets worse. As her stress levels go up, it's the same chemicals of stress that are knocking the brain and body out of balance, signaling the wrong genes in the wrong way. And another few months later, she develops these huge ulcerations in all the mucous membranes of her body, in her mouth, her throat, her upper stomach, her bladder, her vagina, her anus. She's got these huge ulcers. Now she can't eat, and if she can't eat, she's knocking her body now out of chemical balance even more, and it hurts. So now she's spiraling downward, and then she finally starts noticing her symptoms getting worse, and she goes to the doctor, and they diagnose her with esophageal cancer. Now the moment she gets the diagnosis of esophageal cancer, now she gets even more stressed, and she's in fear now, and she realizes that her children may not have a mom. And so she came to one of our workshops, and I remember specifically because she came in with crutches and a wheelchair and a walker, and she sat on the left side of the room. And it was an introductory level course, and she understood that she could change it intellectually, but she had a very big challenge ahead of her, and she realized how much she was in her past. She had a vision of her future. Like she wasn't visualizing anything, she just got a very clear vision. And she was so excited that she went home and she did her meditation every single day. Now she understood that she had to upregulate new genes and downregulate genes that had to do with her disease, and that every day she had to knock on the genetic door. Now, the first thing I want to say is that I'm certain that there were days that she didn't feel like doing her meditation, and she did that anyway. She did it anyway. There were days where she had a tremendous amount of doubt, and she didn't think it was possible, but she did her meditations every single day. That's the point. So as people start getting through this and they start having very profound moments and they're now opening their heart and they can sustain heart coherence and they know how to create brain coherence, that's the formula. And now they have a laser. 
They have coherent light and information that can read information that exists beyond the senses. And the pineal gland, once activated, will transduce it into profound imagery. Whether you see with your eyes open or your eyes closed, it doesn't matter because it's more real than anything you've ever experienced. Let's have a small pause here. It's the next part. Dr. Zhou is going to talk about his research about the four states of matter. Listen carefully. This is very important. And so I started researching and I found that there's four states of matter. There's solids, there's liquids, there's gases, and the biggest, most abundant form of matter, what's called plasma. And plasma is when you have a negative charge and a positive charge, and they haven't formed an atom yet. So if you have a negative charge and a positive charge, then you're going to have an electrical current running between the two and a field around that current. And the universe really, stars connect through plasma. Everything connects through plasma. So when you start seeing these complex patterns, it's an impression from that plasma that's being pressed into three-dimensional reality. And so if you take three stones, right, and you drop them at the same time into a plate, and you freeze the water in the plate, and those three stones fall, and they start producing concentric rings, and they start interfering with each other, you're starting to get complex pattern of interference. If you take a light and you shine it through that frozen piece of matter, when you shine the light through it, when the light shines through it, the laser shines through it, you will see the appearance, a hologram, of those three stones projected out into space. That's exactly how reality is. So then reality then is a projection, right? And so then when you study matter, it's not matter that's emitting a field. It's actually those complex patterns that are creating matter. So then you don't change the tumor. The tumor is the effect of the pattern in the field. Change the field, you change matter. So teaching people how to do that when they change the pattern in the field and it starts to appear as change in three-dimensional reality, the illusion is everybody's been trying to change matter.